My name is Bogdan, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started with Molten. So I've created a virtual environment here uh, where I've installed GeoUnicorn and Molten. Next I'm going to create a file called app.py, and in that file I'm going to instantiate my application object. Next I'm going to uh, import and register a couple of handlers, uh, the first of which is going to help me expose uh, an open API document representing my API, uh, and then the other is going to expose an endpoint that that uh, we can use to exercise that uh, open API schema via the Swagger UI. So from Molten, open API, import open API handler and open API UI handler. And the open API handler takes a metadata parameter, so I'm also gonna import that. Um, I'm going to declare get schema as um, a value of instantiating the open API handler. I'm going to pass it that metadata. Uh, so it takes a title. It's just going to be example API, a description. Just going to be an API for now. And then versions, let's say 000. And next I'll uh, declare a handler called get docs. And that's just going to instantiate the UI handler. And now I'm just going to register those two handlers. And I just need to import my route. Now I should be able to run my application. You can see that it booted up without any issue. Uh, if I try to get um, the schema endpoint, you can see it generates an open API schema for my API. Uh, and then if I visit the docs endpoint in my browser, you can see the Swagger UI here automatically consuming that, um, that generated schema. So next I'm going to define um, a uh, pet object. That's just going to be um, just so I can I can demo uh, validation. So here we've got a pet class that's decorated with the schema decorator. Uh, and pets are going to have an ID, which is going to be an optional integer, and it's going to be a response only field. This means that uh, if someone sends us an ID for a pet in a request, it's just going to be ignored. Um, let's see, pets are also going to have names, that's just going to be a string, and then let's say they'll have uh, an age, it's just going to be an integer, and let's say it's going to be between 0 and 100, so minimum is going to be 0, maximum is going to be 100, and let me import optional. So if I go back to, whoops, Looks like my GeoCorn server died. If I go back to my browser now, nothing should really change at this point. But if I create a handler, let's call it create pet. That's going to take a pet uh, parameter. Uh, it's also going to return a tuple of a string and a pet. And it's going to return a 201 response followed by a pet. Um, let me import tuple and HTTP 201. If I register this route now, create and go back to my browser. You can see there's a pets endpoint here, and you can see that it knows that. The request body should contain a name field and an age field. The age should be between 0 and 100. Um, it also knows that uh, the handler only ever returns a 201 response. Like you can see here, I specifically went for a 201 response. Uh, and it knows what the response object looks like. So it knows it has an ID as opposed to the to the input object, which doesn't. Uh, it knows it has a name and an age. So if I try it out right now, you can see it 
set up a, a little example value for me. So if I execute it, see it returned the same data I put in. Uh, the ID is null, so let's fix that. Pet ID was one. So now if I try this again, you can get ID one here. Um, so that's pretty cool. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a little middleware for authentication. So it's going to take a handler and it's going to return a function that inspects the authorization header. And then let's just make it based on HTTP error R1. And the error message is going to be that credentials. Let's fix our imports. And let's see, so if we get an authorization header and the authorization header uh, is a string containing the bearer followed by a string open sesame, sesame, then we want to continue. Otherwise, we raise a 401. Uh, so if I plug this in, And then also, because I've specified a, a middleware list here, I also need to um, instantiate and pass the default middleware, which is going to be the response renderer middleware. So response renderer, JSON, there we go. So now, problem is, that, whoops, the problem is that middleware is going to apply to all my endpoints. So now if I try to visit my schema endpoint, it's going to say bad credentials. So what I can do is I can import this annotate function from Molten and just annotate my uh, get schema and get docs handlers with no auth. Uh, get schema. and then make it so that this middleware checks, um, just looks for that annotation on uh, the handler. So get adder, return no auth, false. So the default is gonna be false, but if it's present and true, then it's just gonna uh, go ahead and call the handler. And so what annotate does is it, it just sets an attribute on um, whatever um, function you pass to it. So if I save now uh, and then try to get my schema again, we can see that it works. If I go in here, we can see that this is still working, but the problem is um, the open API document isn't aware of our authentication method. And we can fix that by passing in some more metadata to the Open API handler. Um, I'm going to pass in an HTTP security scheme to the uh, security schemes list. Um, so that's going to take a name followed by the type of HTTP security scheme, and you can find uh, the uh, types in the, if you read the uh, open API uh, spec, and this is just going to be bare. And then I'm going to set the default security scheme to the name of this security scheme that I just defined. If I go back to my browser, click authorize, you can see that it knows um, about the security scheme now. Um, so if I close this, go to pets, try to create a new pet. You can see that it, it replies with an error bad credentials. But if I uh, authorize my requests and then try and make the same request again, you can see that it worked. So there you have it. This was a very brief demo of what Molten can do. It's actually a lot more powerful than this, and I suggest you check out the docs. Thanks.